I hesitate to say this because I don't ever want to discourage anyone from being active. I think it's really, really good, especially in this day and age, to be active. But I also think it's important to have a comprehensive understanding of of truth in certain realms. And something that I see sometimes are people who want to optimize strength gains and are very interested okay. in making strength and muscle gain progress in the gym and okay. uh, and also are very active and, and like things like pickup basketball, like backyard football, martial arts, things of that nature. Uh, and And I think a lot of people don't realize that those additional activities are amazing in and of themselves, but they do make it harder to progress in building strength and muscle. Agree or disagree? Uh, well, obviously the classic, it depends, right? Um, it depends on how much they're doing, right? Um, if they're, if they're like doing it for like three to five hours a week. Yeah. It inherently makes it harder just because you're, you're expending more energy. There's less time that you can put into the gym. There's less effort and energy and intensity that you can put into, into strength training. So yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that in the fitness world, especially an hour out of the fitness world, I know I used to struggle with this a lot. I assumed people wanted to be as to be bigger and stronger than they really did. Like I I think for the average person, especially like my average client, they don't want to be as big and strong as a lot of fitness people do. I'll never forget. Do you remember Martin Birkin? Do you remember one of his client testimonials from years ago? Uh, like you have to remember this because Martin's client testimonials were like legendary at the time. It was just like, holy shit, this guy's producing insane client results. Da, da, da. And, and one of his client testimonials, there was a guy who had told him he wanted to look like Brad Pitt in uh, mm -hmm. Fight Club. Mm -hmm. And then he put a side-by-side -side picture of his client and then Brad Pitt and his client's physique was way more impressive. And he was mm -hmm. like, I think he did a pretty damn good job. And I, like, I'll never forget that. It was a genius way to, like, to show that client transformation from a marketing perspective, mm -hmm. but also from the perspective of even for guys who say they want to like get – big muscles like a lot of them are like well i don't want to get like a bodybuilder though they're like they they want to be like lean and have they want to be like toned and defined they don't want to get as big and bulky so for that i don't think it's going to impede people like the average joe or jane from really achieving what they want but if you want to achieve pretty insane levels of of muscular development and strength development or or advanced levels or even high intermediate to advanced then yeah, you're going to have to start like reducing the extra activity so you can put more time and, and, and really intensity into your training. I've just seen in myself and in so many clients stall out on strength progress and find less enjoyment in training and, and then reduce other activity and watch results in the yeah. gym skyrocket. So I'm not yeah. making a judgment call on on whether or not the sacrifice of optimal progress for the enjoyment and benefit of the other activities. I'm not making a judgment on what you should or shouldn't do, but I'm saying, it, in fact, if I was to make a judgment, I'd say do those other activities. Like I think it's probably the right path for most people from a mental and physical health perspective, but those extra activities do make it harder to make that progress in the gym. 100%. And that's something you need to realize, especially if you're kind of the neurotic type who is really trying to make it as much progress as possible. Understand that that extra stuff you're doing isn't helping you, like sp sports specifically. I have that conversation occasionally now, but I used to have it all the time when a lot of my clients were power lifters. Mm -hmm. I bet. When they, they wanted to compete, even recreational, not like high level. I mean, recreational men and women who were between 18 and 60 who were competing in powerlifting. And, and they're telling me how they're doing, whether it's like CrossFit or they're going like a rucking and all this stuff. And it's like, and then they're also trying to do powerlifting. I'm like, well, yeah, like, of course your max has an increased rate. Like, you already have a, a relatively 
intermediate to high intermediate level of strength. So your your progress is going to be slow anyway. And then you're going on like 12 mile rucks throughout the week. Of course, you're, you're going to be, not only is it going to be more difficult because of that lack of energy, but I remember Eric Cressy would talk about this all the time. Um, he would, he would always talk about how he would like, if you're, if you're, he's a baseball guy, right? So baseball is a very like anaerobic, alactic sport, or, like quick, explosive. When you run from home to first or any of the bases, like it should be like a couple seconds. It's not a, a, a long duration thing. When you take a swing at the ball, boom, it's quick, explosive. It's powerful, anaerobic, alactic, as powerful as it gets. So he's like, why am I going to have someone go on 45 minute runs and train the complete opposite energy system that they need to be training when they're a high level, they're, they're a high level professional athlete in this sport. So if you're trying to compete at a high level, then it makes sense to at the very least minimize, if not drop those things entirely. Um, but if you're just a every day, you know, I want to strength train, but I also want to do this. And I also want to do this, like go for it. But yeah, it inherently makes it harder for sure. <laughs>